Hi, so today I would like to talk about how to migrate or grow such a system. So basically this is a storage setup which consists of two hard disks which have uh, a partition, then RAID 1, then a partition, then LUX and then finally LVM uh, and there are some logical volumes. So the goal is to use the whole space of the disks. In this case, we have four terabyte disks, which they have only a two terabyte partition each, and we want to use the full disk size. This might happen because, for example, if you replace the disks and you just use DD to uh, imagine if this system was originally on two two terabyte disks, so. Uh, then I wanted to upgrade to four terabyte ones, but I didn't want to deal with the migration or creating a new RAID array or anything like that. So I just did it, uh, the data from the two terabyte disk to, to the four terabyte ones and replace them uh, in place. And now I want to grow the things that are on top of that. So. I would like to share the experience of trying to do this without being sure of how it should be done and uh, share with you the findings and how did I end up doing it, which worked. But first, the unsuccessful path. So uh, let, let's go through it. Let me explain the setup. We have two four terabyte disks and each one of them has a partition of the same size, uh, two terabytes approximately. And those two partitions together, they form a RAID 1 array using uh, software RAID, MDADM in this case. Uh, RAID 1 is also known as a mirror, so the, both disks will have the same information. Uh, and in case one of them dies, the other one still has all of the information needed and the broken one can be replaced in place uh, without downtime and so on. Uh, it has other advantages such as reading speed being higher since uh, you can read from either one of them or you can read from both at the same time and uh, writing speed is not that much harmed uh, since you can write both of them in parallel. You just have to wait for the slowest one. So yeah, it's pretty nice for a server that contains important data. This doesn't mean you don't need a backup. You need a backup still, but in case there is a problem, you will just get an email from MDADM telling you to replace a disk. You can replace it and, uh, and then rate the array will replicate to the new disk and everything. We continue to run as normal and you don't have to have any downtime or anything like that. So yeah, uh, I like this setup, uh, but it has some problems that, that we will see. So yeah, on then and on top of the RAID 1 device, like the, the RAID, virtual RAID creates a device that's usually like slash dev slash MD0 or something like that. That is uh, the device of the RAID array that you can create partitions, you can, you could uh, create something on top like LUX or LVM. In this case, what we have on top of the array is a two terabyte partition of the uh, RAID device. And on top of that LUX, this is an encrypted, an encryption tool that will encrypt the whole device or partition. It works with both. In this case, it's encrypting the whole partition. And on top of that, we have LVM, uh, Logical Volume Manager, which allows us to create uh, devices that you could think about as partitions, but they are uh, logical ones. So this has some advantages. Uh, it's LVM who handles this and it's infinitely better than dealing with partitions. With partitions, you have some limitations, like for example, a partition can only be in one device, the number of partitions that you can have in a device is limited. It depends if you use master boot record or GPT or something like that, but uh, well, it has some limitations. And also for migrating and things like that, uh, those migrations are even uh, more annoying, let's say. 
we, we will see that today. So then we in LDM we have like some logical volumes in this case data and home which we which have a X4 file system and they they are mounted to slash data or slash home and we use the, during the we use with the server. So okay, uh, this is the setup. It's not the best. I will tell you why, but it's the setup that I came up to uh, when I set up my my server. This is not weird, like having two disks in a RAID one. That's pretty common. I think that part is fine. And then some people prefer to have LDM before looks. So they would create LDM directly in the RAID one device or in its partition and uh, then encrypt the logical volumes instead. You can also do that. In my case, I prefer to have looks the encryption layer on a lower level because I just unencrypt one device and then LDM has everything unencrypted and can be mounted directly. Uh, since you can automate the decryption of the things, you could, for example, encrypt all of them, but store the keys to decrypt the other ones in one of them. So in practice, you would only have to decrypt one for the other ones to work, or you could have the the decryption keys in root and you wouldn't have to decrypt any of them. I don't want to get too much into that, but just for you to know, you might see in the internet, it's maybe more common to have LDM before looks, but I prefer looks before LDM. Anyway, let's start with the migration. So to remind you, we want to uh, use the full capacity of these disks. That, that's the goal, that's the goal. While keeping these partitions here, and uh, let's add a cooler constraint. Want to do this online, so no booting from a USB, no, yeah, no downtime or or anything. Uh, it should be possible, and it actually is. So this is the wrong way to do it, or at least the one I started trying and I didn't like after all. Uh, we will go with the right one later. So the wrong way. Okay, we have two disks, and we have a partition of two terabytes. We have to start from the bottom since we are growing things. When you are uh, shrinking things, you start from the top. You start from the top. When you are growing things, you have to start from the bottom because if you grew the things on top, it wouldn't fit in the underlying layer. So it's clear that we have to start from here. There's no question there. And then you could say, okay, why don't we just uh, grow the partition where the RAID one, so let's say this is SDA, and this is SDA1, the partition, this partition right here. Uh, why don't we just grow it, uh, tell the kernel to load the new partitions with part probe so we don't have to shut down and uh, reboot, and then do the same with the other one and then tell uh, MDADM to grow the RAID. Well, I didn't dare to do this. I didn't want to change the partition table live because it's not completely clear if that can cause trouble or not. Since I found some opinions against them in Stack Overflow and things like that, I decided not to go that way. But since it's a RAID 1, we have another option. Why don't we fail a disk? Let's, let's say, let's tell MDAM that this disk failed, died, and then we can just redo the partition table and add it back to the array, right? Since this other disk has the same information, we can, like, that's the point of RAID 1, that one disk can fail and the whole thing will still work. So, okay, first step, let's say MDA, DM, uh, fail SDA1, which is the partition, this one, that uh, MDA, DM is using for this array. Cool. Uh, once it's failed, we can remove it, MDA, DM, minus, minus, remove, uh, dev SDA1. And now, if we go and do, like, cat proc MDA stat, we can see that the array is degraded but still active. So it will tell us only one of the two disks is up. Um, it's still working, but it's not as it should be. Okay, we know that, but it's fine. So now you just use parted or F disk, whatever you prefer to delete the partition table, create a new one in this disk, and that's it. Another step is to remove the previous RAID, MDADM RAID signature from SDA1 because otherwise it can cause trouble. Uh, but yeah, all of the commands I, I will put in the, in the description. So 
we remove, uh, we fail and remove the, the partition, then we remove the looks header, uh, sorry, the RAID MDADM header from it. And then we've parted or F disk, whatever you prefer, create a new partition table. And we don't even need to uh, create a new partition table because we are not going to use partitions. Uh, using partitions is a pain. Th this is what I learned here. So what we are going to do instead is we are going to use the full device. Instead of creating a partition in it and then using that for the array, we are going to use the full device for the uh, array. So we are going to use dev SDA instead of dev SDA1. So we remove the rate signature from SDA1 and we remove the partition table. That's it. The, the disk is clean. We can then prepare the disk to be added to the array and then say uh, MDADM minus minus add, uh, manage the, this uh, array and add this disk. Okay. And after that, something will happen. Now we added a four terabyte device to the two terabyte RAID uh, array, but that's fine. It will sync it. So it will start syncing this will take like, in this case, it was like around three hours. You can see the progress from cat uh, proc MDA, MDA stat. Uh, but yeah, once it's finished, we will have a still a two terabyte array, but with one four terabyte disk and this uh, two terabyte partition here. So now we fix something like this is no longer here. We have this like this. Cool. What are we going to do next? The same thing. We are going to fail and remove this disk and repeat the same process here once the sync is finished. So when the sync is finished, this device will have all of the information for the array. Then we can add, uh, we can remove the other disk, do the same thing, remove the, the header and remove like remove the array rate signature and remove the partition table, clean the disk, add it again. Okay. Then the sync process will happen again here. Fine. But now we have, if we do all of that and everything goes well, we have two four terabyte devices in the two terabyte RAID array. Okay, uh, how do we go grow the array to use the full, the full space or the smallest of the devices? Since this is a mirror, uh, you can add a eight million terabyte disk if you want, uh, but it will only use uh, as the array maximum size, the, um, the size of the smallest uh, device or partition. So in this case, they both have four terabytes, that's fine. So if we say MDADM grow uh, to this array, uh, it will now use four terabytes, cool. Uh, then some resync uh, process happens, like it rearranges something internally that will take like eight hours maybe in, in, in this case. But yeah, now we have a four terabyte RAID one array. Very cool. So we got rid of these two guys and now this two is a four. Fine. Then we still have a two terabyte partition here in the array. This is what I said before that partitions are not cool in this kind of setups. So, so because what do we do now? How do we grow that partition live? If the partition table is GPT, it will have the partition header or the partition information at the beginning of the device and also a backup at the end of the partition in this case and reading the looks documentation it should be possible to grow the partition and then grow the looks file system looks doesn't actually uh, store any information about the size of it, it it's just something that uh, translates from decrypted to encrypted uh, information it doesn't need to know the size or of where it is you you might need to tell uh, it to reload it uh, if it's open and you changed it to use a full size but also closing the device and open it again would uh, effectively use the same size but we said we want to do this live we want to prevent uh, downtime right so in the documentation it says it should be possible but it's not recommended there are a lot of things that could go wrong it doesn't say what but that message was enough to scare me from doing it. So my intention was to actually grow this partition live with parted or fdisk 
and do part probe to get the kernel to reload the new partition size and tell looks like, hey, look, the partition you are using actually grew, so please use the full space. But after reading that, I said, okay, I, I'm stuck here. I don't want to go further because I want to do this live and I don't want to lose the data. So this is the end of the wrong way, wrong path. The lessons learned here is partitions suck, physical partitions suck. They are very annoying when you want to do these kind of changes and when you want to do them live, because if only I had looks mounted on top of the RAID device directly, I wouldn't have to deal with growing the partition online or anything like that, because the device would grow and I would, could just tell looks like, hey, use this uh, space. And then I could tell LDM like, hey, your physical volume grew, so use it. Uh, maybe you don't even need to tell LDM, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, partitions here were pretty annoying. Like, oh, what's the point? What, what do we get from them? So, okay, now we didn't lose any data. We are still online, everything's still working. And we have a four terabyte RAID 1 array, but we have a two terabyte partition here that we don't want to change because manual uh, looks manual says it's not a good idea doesn't explain why it's pretty annoying but i didn't want to take the risks probably it would have worked to grow that partition live reload it and keep going with the rest but the data here is very important and i don't want to deal with recovering the system from the backup so we have to find another way and here's where the actual solution or what I consider to be the best solution for this problem uh, starts. Okay, so now for the good solution uh, that is compatible from the state we were left in and it's compatible if you're doing it from the beginning. So if what you actually wanted is to solve a problem like this, start listening now. Okay, so let's say we have the initial setup uh, now Let's go with the good solution, the recommended solution for migrating this uh, storage stack to uh, use the full size of the disks. So what would I recommend to do to migrate this stack, let, let's say even with two terabyte disks, what should we do to migrate this stack to larger disks? But let's say we only uh, have two SATA ports, so we cannot connect more disks at the same time. If you can, that's, the instructions would be the same. Anyway, uh, so first, what we would do here is we would fail this disk in RAID, actually the partition, right? So now we have a degraded RAID 1 array with one disk, everything's fine. Then we would add the four terabyte disks in this case. Okay, we just connected our empty four terabyte disk. And what we're going to do now is we are going to create, we are going to create a new stack, completely new. So we'll have another RAID 1 array. We'll have, everything else will be different. We'll be from scratch. And what we'll do instead is we'll prepare everything and then tell LVM to add this physical volume, so the one that is uh, mounted on top of this new hard disk. And then we will migrate the logical volumes to the new stack. And then we can just get rid of the old one. Finally, add the new disk. So how this would work is we'll add this disk. We'll create a RAID 1 array with only one disk at first here. So now we have a RAID 1 array directly on the device, no partitions. We are tired of partitions. And then on top of this uh, new array, let's call it MD1, like the old one is MD0, this is MD1. On top of it, instead of creating a partition like we did before, we are going to use the device and encrypt the full device with looks. That's perfectly po possible and supported. Okay, so we encrypt the, the device with looks. Fine. 
Remember, we are doing this online. The system is not off and the data in the old stack is still being used and working. So what then? Then we have to create a new physical device for LVM. And we can use the old LVM and just connect it to the new uh, physical device that we'll create here of the unencrypted Lux device. So I won't draw this, but we connect the new uh, Lux device, like the decrypted version of the encrypted grade one device uh, to our existing LVM. And what we are going to do is we are going to tell LVM to migrate uh, data and home on any logical volume that we have in the old stack to this new disk. So now we have data and home in the new physical volume of the same LVM setup and we no longer need, uh, they are no longer here and uh, the LVM, like the, this physical volume, like this physical volume for LVM no longer has anything. So uh, we can just remove it. Same way you can add a physical volume to LVM, you can remove one only if it's empty. Uh, so since it's now empty, we can now remove the physical volume from LVM and then effectively remove all of this stack. So now uh, we have a spare disk or spare SATA port, uh, depending on your setup. But basically, let's say we have an, another four terabyte disk. So now with this uh, other second four terabyte disk, what we're going to do is simply add it to the new array, the MDM one. And uh, after replication between these two is completed, we are done. Was there any downtime? No, this was all online. Uh, we didn't take any risky steps or anything because at first we just remove one of the devices from here and then we create a new stack, however you want. And we just use LVM capabilities to move, to move logical volumes to a new uh, physical volume, which is the new one we created. Then uh, we tell LVM that it should no longer use the all this physical volume, however it's called, and uh, we can reuse the disk that's, that was here or the SATA port to add a new disk to the old setup and have active and undegraded RAID 1 array with the two disks working. So now again, if one of the disks fail, everything's fine. Uh, we can just replace it. And yeah, we still have encryption. We still have LVM on top and so on and so forth. But there are some considerations uh, left to be done. So now uh, we need this system to boot next time. And we made some significant changes to it. What changes did we make? Well, before the onboot, uh, the logical RAID uh, arrays are automatically set up by checking the uh, MDADM uh, header or signature in the disks. So the disks say, I'm a member of this RAID array and then another disk is found and say, I'm also a member of this uh, RAID array and they are put together and their uh, array is assembled. But then on top of that uh, RAID array, uh, before we had a partition, okay, that's fine, that was stored in it. And then we had looks. So we have to change the ETC crypt tab because we changed the partitions or devices that have to be decrypted. So now this looks device here has some other name and uh, it comes from a device with a different UUID. So we need to update the ETC crypta. Then uh, LVM, uh, once if the, if the device is decrypted automatically, LVM will automatically recognize it and set up itself. Uh, so that means we don't have to change ETC F, FS tab because it didn't change. In ETC F, FS tab before we had like these logical volumes, data and home that still have the same name because we are using the same LVM setup. 
it's the same uh, volume group as we had before. We didn't create a new one or anything. We just added a new physical device and migrated the data there. But from LBM's perspective, nothing changed. Uh, only there's more space because the new physical volume is larger, but uh, it doesn't change. But crypto has to change. And if you are using, if you are using uh, init RAM FS or something like that to handle the decryption and so on, you should remember to update init RAM FS minus U. Uh, so you need to update that if you make any changes to crypto or things like that, so that it also knows about the changes and it's able to detect the things uh, that need to be decrypted, prompt you for the password and, and know what to decrypt. So this uh, is all you should do. Uh, now as an anecdote, <laughs> I will tell you some things that went wrong, but that was possible to recover. So in some of the steps, I forgot to remove the all signature from a disk. So when I removed one of these disks uh, that had a partition that was a member of a RAID array, uh, I just added the disk. I didn't delete the partition table or remove the right the right signature or anything. So what happened is next time, like after I finished all of that and I rebooted the system to check that everything was fine, even if I updated in the RAMFS and so on, the system couldn't boot because it was trying to assemble the old RAID array and it wasn't finding the disks and then well, the disk that had the old partition with the old RAID signature said, ah, I'm busy, I cannot be used for anything else. So then the new array uh, wasn't able to uh, be assembled either and so on, very annoying. <laughs> I panicked a bit, uh, but this has a solution. It's not the end of the world. Um, basically, what I had to do, and I could do it from within the init RAM file system, you have there some, like maybe you connect with SSH uh, and you have some very, very basic tools like PCBox and some Linux ones, you have MDADM. So what I did with MDADM is I forced the assembly of the of the other array of the new one even with one disk and uh, then what i did is i booted up with that and then from the boot uh, booted system let's say this disk was not recognized and i started only with this one and then what i did from the boot uh, system is i cleaned the disk that wasn't working properly well that had the old signature and that was causing some trouble i cleaned it like I removed it from the array, I cleaned it and I re-added it, waited for the sync again. And then on the next boot, there was no old signature, no partition table, no anything in this disk that uh, caused any trouble. So I could boot up perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, keep that in mind. If you don't clean the partition tables or the rate uh, header signatures on the disks, it might ca cause some trouble. So I recommend you to do so and I'll leave the, comment, the commands on the description. And as a recap, maybe the lessons learned is RAID 1 is super cool. Thanks to having RAID 1 with two disks with the same information, I was able to uh, migrate the full stack without having to turn off the system. That is very, very, very nice. The other lesson learned is that partitions suck. Partitions, not even once. Use LVM, use whatever you want. The, the full device partitions suck, physical ones. And that's it. I'm very happy with the outcome and I struggle to find information about this or even success or failure stories from others. Uh, so that's why I wanted to share this video with you. Uh, if you like it, let me know. And if you have any questions or you are facing something similar yourself, we can discuss it in the comments. See you.